action leads to results. Results leads to confidence. And confidence is what destroys limiting beliefs. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to destroy your limiting beliefs. And this one's gonna be super important because I was having a conversation with somebody who is in uh, my upper level course, which is called Business Breakthrough, uh, where I work with business owners and coaches on how to build businesses. And one of the things that was said to me yesterday was I need to think about my limiting beliefs and work through them mentally before I take action. That was the, the phrase, something along that line that someone said to me. And uh, I heard it and I was like, that is a perfect episode. And so I just covered it today inside of my business breakthrough group with everyone on a Zoom call, but I wanted to cover it with you today because I think it would help everybody that's out there. Because I want you to realize this, thinking about your limiting beliefs will never ever conquer your limiting beliefs. Let me say that again. Thinking about your limiting beliefs will never ever conquer your limiting beliefs because limiting beliefs are caused by your thoughts. And we all know, you consciously know right now that the limiting beliefs that are holding you back from the life that you truly want, most of the time aren't even true. And so if you're sitting out there and you're holding yourself back because of limiting beliefs, thinking about those limiting beliefs is the last thing that you need to do because here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna say, okay, I need to think about where these limiting beliefs came from. Okay, you know, this limiting belief of I'm not good enough, where did it come from? It came from my mom. Okay, well, now I feel bad because I'm thinking about the fact that my mom is a great person, but I have limiting beliefs because of her, but I'm still kind of pissed off because of the fact that I got these limiting beliefs from her and I don't deserve these. So now I'm thinking about where it came from. I feel bad about it. Now I'm starting to get pissed off and thinking about where it came from doesn't really matter. What matters is getting past those limiting beliefs, not figuring out where they came from. Now, is it important to know where they came from? Yes, but to sit there and think about where they came from is not going to move you into the future that you want. Because now I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about X, Y, Z, and I'm thinking about how I got limiting beliefs from my mom and from my dad and from people who used to bully me and from teachers who talked down to me. And I'm thinking about all these things and the limiting beliefs that I have. And now I feel bad. And now not only do I feel bad, now I'm getting mad at myself for feeling bad because I shouldn't feel bad about something that happened in the past. Can you relate to this? A bunch of people out there are nodding your heads, right? Where you're like, oh my God, exactly. I start thinking something, then I feel a certain way, and then I judge myself for feeling the way that I feel because I don't ultimately want to feel that way. And now my limiting beliefs are not only holding me back from the life that I want, but they're actually keeping me paralyzed in this moment because I'm thinking too much about my limiting beliefs. And what's that going to do for me? Absolutely nothing. Thinking about your limiting beliefs is not going to do anything. So I'm sitting there, I'm not taking action. I feel bad. And now I'm judging myself for feeling bad. Have you ever been in this situation? I'm sure you have, right? So now thinking about my limiting beliefs has sent me down this negative spiral crapshoot of thinking about my life. And now I'm sitting on the couch, I'm pissed off, I feel bad, and I definitely don't feel like taking action. So now, and we, you have to realize, we started off by not taking action because I was thinking about, because of my limiting beliefs, period. But now after thinking about all my limiting beliefs, I'm basically paralyzed on the couch. So by thinking about my limiting beliefs, has it gotten me anywhere? No. Has it gotten me to take any action? No, it's actually sent me backwards because now I feel like crap when at least I didn't feel like crap when this started. So what do we do? We have to conquer the limiting beliefs. And you can't conquer limiting beliefs by thinking about them. The only way that you can conquer those limiting beliefs, because ultimately what's the only thing that matters? The limiting belief doesn't matter. Where it came from doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is getting past that limiting belief. So now you're sitting out there and you're like, okay, well, how do I get past the limiting belief? How do I conquer these limiting beliefs? There's one way and one way only to get past your limiting belief. And that is this, taking action. And you may have heard me say this before, but the beautiful thing about believing in yourself or not believing in yourself is that you don't have to believe in yourself in order to take action. You don't. You don't have to believe in yourself in order to take action. Thinking causes more thinking. Inaction causes more inaction. So let me give you an example. The thinking causes more, in, more thinking, 
We covered that just a second ago. Inaction causes more inaction. So if you're sitting on the couch and you say, you know what, I have this business, I started this business, and I really want to you know, make my business so much better. And you're sitting on the couch and you're not doing anything, not doing something in that inaction will breed more inaction. So thinking causes more thinking. Inaction causes more inaction. Here's the secret though. Action causes more action. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll give you a perfect example. Today, I didn't want to work out. Didn't want to. And I'll be honest with you. I don't want to work out any day. I've never, I don't know if I've ever wanted to work out in my entire life, right? But what do I do? I say, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to force myself to do it anyways. So I didn't feel like taking action going and working out. And then by the end of the workout, I had finished and I ran out of time because I had to come back and run a meeting. I thought to myself, man, I wish I had just a little bit more time to work out because I feel so good right now. You ever feel that way? You don't want to work out, you work out. And then at the end of the workout, you're like, you know what? I could probably go for another set. I could probably go for another five minutes. I could probably go for an extra run. I'm in it. I feel it. I'm moving. I want to keep this moving. My heart rates up. My body's feeling good. I want to continue to push myself. Why? Because the action of pushing yourself to do it causes more action to continue to want to do it. It's like a, you know, what I always say is it's like taking a bowling ball at the top of a, a really high, you know, you take and you put it on the top of a really high mountain and you let it go. It's going to take a second to go. But if you go down a hundred yards, 200 yards, of that mountain, that bowling ball is flying. So the hardest part is getting the bowling ball moving, but once it's moving and it's going downhill, it's freaking going downhill and it's hauling some tail all the way downhill. It's the same thing for your action. When you're sitting on the couch and you're doing nothing, you have to have that self-awareness to go, I'm not taking action right now. Okay. What do I need to do? I need to take some action. What do I need to do? I don't feel like doing anything if I'm being honest with you, but what am I going to do? I'm going to do 30 pushups. I'm going to force myself to move. I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to do something that gets my body moving and puts it into action because I know if I start to move, I'm going to want to continue to move. Now, if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm thinking about wanting to take action, that's not going to make me take action. Only getting up and actually taking action will breed more action. So the only way to conquer your limiting beliefs, going back to limiting beliefs now, is you have to get up and take action because here's what happens. Here's the secret sauce. You ready? Action leads to results. Results leads to confidence. And confidence is what destroys limiting beliefs. There's the secret. You can't break your limiting beliefs by thinking about them. The only way that you can break your limiting beliefs is to build your confidence by getting results. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. So an example that I gave to my coaching clients today, they're all coaches building coaching businesses. The example that I gave them is this. If you're sitting around thinking about is somebody going to buy from me? Are they going to use my services? Are my services worth it? Am I worth charging a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a month? That is not going to get any money in your bank account. What is going to get money in your bank account? Getting up, using the exact strategy that I give you, taking action, getting on the phone with some people, some people saying yes, some people saying no, and you might have a few people say no and no and no. But if you keep fighting through and you keep pushing yourself, eventually somebody will say yes. So let's say your price that you want to charge is $1,500 a month, right? And someone says no, someone says no, someone says no. And then finally someone says yes. That person saying yes to you will then conquer those limiting beliefs of am I worth 1500 bucks? So basically what's crazy about it's like a catch 22 in order to fully believe in yourself and fully believe that you're worth it. You actually sometimes have to have somebody buy from you at that price and they prove to you that you're worth it. You see what I'm you picking up what I'm putting down the result of the buy from that person makes you go, Oh my God, maybe I am actually worth more than I thought I was worth. And then you get excited about it. And you're like, I want to get on the phone. And I want to sell to somebody else. And this is just used as in a sales, a sales example. But how many examples are there in your life where you only built confidence in whatever it is that you did 
by going out and getting results, right? If you're a gymnast, you're not going to get confidence in being a gymnast by just sitting around thinking about doing the twirl and landing it. No, you're going to get confidence by attempting the twirl and falling and attempting the twirl and falling, attempting the twirl and falling and getting better each and every time and figuring out what you're doing wrong. And eventually you do the twirl, you stick the landing and what happens? You put your arms up in the air and you're like, oh my God, I just stuck the landing. And what happens? That little voice inside of your head gets a little bit quieter each time. You're just turning it down a little bit, turning it down a little bit. Confidence is what destroys limiting beliefs and confidence comes from results. Results only come from taking action. And so here's the thing that I said a few minutes ago. The beautiful thing about taking action is you don't have to believe in yourself to take action. You don't have to believe in yourself to reach out to clients. You don't have to believe in yourself to go out there and twirl like a gymnast and eventually land it. You don't have to believe in yourself when you shoot a basket that you're gonna make it, but eventually you will make it. And when you make that first shot, you get a little bit of confidence and your limiting beliefs get a little bit less. And you make another shot and you get a little bit more confidence and your limiting beliefs go down and you make more and more and more and more and more shots and you have a lot more confidence. I guarantee you this, LeBron James was not as confident in his jump shot when he was nine years old as he is now at 35 years old. Why? Because he's made so many jump shots. There's so many proof of results in his past that he's like, yeah, I've got confidence in this now. Will I miss it? Of course I'll miss some of them, but I'm going to make some of them. But the thing is this, you'll miss 100% of shots you don't take. So if you're sitting around thinking too much about all of the things that are holding you back and all of limiting beliefs and where they came from and your mom did this and your dad did this and your teachers did this and your sister used to say this to you when you were younger and your brother used to beat you up and you've been bullied in school. That's not going to do anything for you. You don't have to believe in yourself in order to take action, but you do have to take action to get the results and you do have to get the results to build the confidence and you do have to have confidence to destroy your limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs are only destroyed through you taking action. But you have to be very self-aware of when you're not being active, when you're inactive, when you're thinking too much, when you're stuck in that negative crap shoot of, you know, that, that negative tornado of all of these things happened to me and now I'm not worth it. Now I don't feel good. And now because of the fact that I don't feel good and I got myself into the situation, now I'm judging myself for feeling this way. Oh my gosh, it's just too much and too much and too much. And we dig our own graves. We do. And eventually you have to just wake up one day and become self-aware and look at it and go, hold on, what, what am I doing? What is this thinking doing for me? It's doing nothing. I can't think about my limiting beliefs and feel better about them. Because if I think about my limiting beliefs, I'm going to feel worse about them. Now, here's the thing that I told everybody on the Zoom call today as well, is this, and this is super important for you to realize, there's a pretty good chance that your limiting beliefs will never go away. Because some people are like, God, I just wish they would go away. One day they will finally go away. I've been working myself for 14 years. I still have my limiting beliefs. Here's the difference though. When they pop up, I just don't listen to them like I used to. So they'll still be there. But the difference is you stop listening to them. You stop caring. It doesn't really matter. Maybe when you first started on this, this journey of personal development, maybe your limiting beliefs were at like a nine. Maybe mine were at a nine. And every year that I worked hard on myself and I got more results and I worked hard on myself and I got more results and more results and more results. I went from a nine to an eight to a seven, to a six. And now maybe they're at a three or four. They still pop up every day, all the time. But now I'm just like, oh, there it is. There's that limiting belief. It's just like the, the example that I gave them. It's just like your, your drunk aunt at the party, right? When you were a kid, the drunk aunt, you didn't know that she was drunk, but she was really mean. She said a bunch of things. And because of the fact that you didn't know that she was drunk and she wasn't normally like that, you could have taken all of those things to heart. Now when you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and you know, Nancy gets drunk again, you're like, up. Oh, there's Nancy getting drunk. That's what she does. But when she comes up and says something to you, you don't take it to heart anymore because you're like, oh, that's drunk Nancy. That's what she's doing, right? We all have the crazy person in our family, right? You're like, up. Oh, there's drunk Nancy. That's what she does. But you don't take what she says to heart. Same thing with those limiting beliefs. Up. Oh, there's my drunk limiting beliefs popping in again, but I'm not going to care about them because I'm not going to listen to them because it honestly doesn't matter. 
I don't have to believe in myself in order to take action. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. The question is, do you truly, truly love yourself? If you don't, that's the reason why you're not taking the action that you need to.